Number three, Razor Leviathan. Razor historically has been a peddler of pointers and the king of keyboards. Just look at the venerable Black Widow or Death Adder. The Leviathan is many things for Razor. It's Razor's first soundbar, mainly, but also it's its first step into your living room and the consoles that live there. It's the first product from Razer that can directly interface with your Xbox One and PS4 via its optical audio input, as well as your PC or TV through auxiliary in. But more than any of these, the Leviathan represents an idea. Companies like Razer can do and become more than ever before. Best described as an all-black half-size soundbar, the Leviathan measures in at 19.7 by 3 by 2.8 inches and comes in around four and a half pounds. Don't let its dimensions throw you, it's similarly sized to other entry-level soundbars and it produces more than enough sound to compensate for its diminutive stature. Looking at the top of the bar, you'll find standard controls as well as the Bluetooth button used to sync the Leviathan up with your mobile device and a preset button that switches between game, music and movie modes. Spin it all the way around to find a proprietary subwoofer out, DC in, optical audio in and auxiliary in jacks as well as two brackets for wall mounting. As it stands though, the subwoofer is one of Leviathan's greatest assets. This little box pushes an astounding amount of air through its 5.25 inch driver and produces a rich bass heavy sound that doesn't distort at its highest volume. I found the low end a little too overpowering for my taste, but if you're a gamer that likes your bass to drop harder than the bodies of your opponents, you'll no doubt come to love the little cube. Besides a few balancing issues, the overall quality of the Leviathan's sound is good no matter which input you decide to use. The Dolby Pro Logic 2 codec will transform any signal, analog, optical or Bluetooth, to be simulated 5.1 surround sound. It has to be simulated though, as the unit is one driver shy of true 5.1 sound. But in spite of its diminutive size, the Leviathan far outgrew our expectations. Number 2. Klipsch Pro Media 2.1 Though not originally made for gaming, the Clips Pro Media 2.1 does hold its own in the world of first-person shooters and real-time strategies. However, that's not why you should buy this speaker. You should because of the price tag and the fact that you get a THX certified 10-year-old model that continues to gain in popularity even today. These are easily the best 2.1 surround sound speakers currently on the market. The Clips Pro Media 2.1 is a three-piece audio system primarily designed for desktop usage as an audio entertainment center. It's THX certified with two satellite speakers, each delivering full stereo sound using 35-watt drivers. For deep rumbling low frequencies, it uses a 130-watt subwoofer that can reach 31 hertz without bottoming out. The satellites each use Clips proprietary micro tactics horns that help maintain clarity regardless of the audio source. You can stream from internet radio, play MP3 or CDs, and this speaker will sound the same. It relies on a hybrid digital amplifier capable of high output that can even power an expensive monitor headphone or the dual stereo analog inputs. Gaming on these speakers is an amazing experience. THX or not, the speakers are fuller than normal 2.1 surround sound units. Yes, spatial differentiation is limited to the left and right zones, but with the power the satellite speakers possess, it's not hard figuring out a bit more than just the direction. If there's one thing that we dislike in the Klipsch Pro Media 2.1, it's the back DIN connectors to the subwoofer. They're not well designed and may eventually fail. It works great with everything. Forget gaming, even low quality audio files sound better on this THX certified speaker set. Yes, the subwoofer eats over 130 watts, but in return, it never fails to power through a demanding mix of highs, lows, and bass. Number 1. Logitech G560 With more than two decades of experience making speakers, we had some very high expectations for Logitech's G560. They might not be the best for the modern audiophile, but we can confidently say these are the most immersive speakers we've tested for gaming. The G560 features six high-powered RGB LEDs per speaker, four face in the rear and two for the front. At maximum brightness, they can be a little distracting in a dark room, but a nifty button at the top of the right speaker lets you tone it down or turn them off completely. A pleasant rainbow color cycle works as the default mode, but jumping into Logitech gaming software is when the magic happens. The software allows you to choose between two control modes for the speakers. Hardware control ditches the software and uses Bluetooth or AUX input devices for lighting. You get the same rainbow color cycle that also acts as an audio visualizer that flashes and brightens to the beat of the music being played. Switching over to software control allows you to choose between fixed color, color cycle, breathing, audio visualizer and screen sampler. Screen sampler is where the G560 really shines. 
Much like ambient backlighting products, the software takes user-defined areas of the screen and extends the colors outwards to create a very immersive lighting experience. These speakers won't provide the same experience the Hue 2 Ambient will provide, but it's a great start. However, since a good portion of this effect relies on the rear-facing LEDs, the speakers need to be positioned right beside your display with their back against a wall to get the best effect. Like most brands creating RGB peripherals, Logitech has an SDK that allows developers to fully utilize the G560 lighting. As of this writing, several popular titles already feature game integration such as League of Legends, Fortnite, Battlefield 1, Dota 2, CSGO, GTA 5, and a few others. The G560 comes with a very powerful downfiring subwoofer, which proved to be amazing for things like explosions, but became quite overpowering at low volumes while listening to music. Adjustments in the software help a little, but you're on your own if you're connected to Bluetooth. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you found it helpful, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this in the future. If you have any questions related to these products, you can leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.